in this marriage, I knew I was the ugliest human being and I was living with him as a favor. And he made sure that that is what he told me every day. I mean, I don't know whether you understand waking up and somebody telling you, Manze siwe ni ugly. God, you're so ugly. I've never seen such an ugly person in my entire life. I'm doing you a favor staying with you. And so I believed you. Lynn, nilichapwa vita. It was so bad. My child was in the room, so she saw. But I, I was unconscious. And so he was so scared that he had killed me. That is how bad it was. That he put me in a bathtub with water and left. Closed the house and drove away. So if I was to die... They would say you drowned. They would say I drowned. And I remember begging doctor, I mean, I even... I knelt and I told him, look, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Don't do this. Don't do this to me. I am not mad. I'm not mad. Don't, don't do the thing. Because I knew what it was. And I'm like, I swear, I take my dad's number. No one knows I'm here. Just ask my dad if I'm mad. And my family doesn't know. person I'm about to bring on stage right now has been through the most. Are we talking about being married young? Exactly. Are we talking about divorce? Exactly. Are we talking about being physically abused, mentally abused? Exactly. But what I love most about her is that she has been able to transform her journey and today, she is helping so many women. But what bothers me most even as Lynn Googie is Google. the fact that every time I would bring her on the show, I never knew she has been through so much. And now, because today I'm about to say what I say and I want all of you to help me, please stand up. Just stand up. Stand up. What are we going to say next? And now... <laughs> And now, without further ado, allow me to let my guest walk on the stage and guys just clap for her. Everybody, our guest for the day. <laughs> Without further ado, please allow me, before we can even take a seat, allow me to let my guest today introduce herself. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Njeri Megwe. Um, I work for Usikimia. For those who know what Usikimia is, and I'm glad to be here today to share the stage with you, Lynn, on your first live experience. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you, sis. Thank you for coming. You can all take your seat. Have a seat. Don't you love these chairs by Furniture Palace? They are lovely, yeah? Mwongi na mimi vizuri. Njeri, thank you so much. I, I could not have imagined doing my first Lynn Gugi Shazmin Banks live experience with another guest. I know we've shared the stage so many times. And when you decided to finally come out with your story, I felt like I had also failed you as a friend. Because no. you're such a hero to so many people. But I get for you to have been a hero to people, you had to be a hero first to yourself. Are you ready? I'm ready. To take us through your story? As ready as I can ever be. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Guys, you know, I don't do a lot of talking, right? We are about to listen to this woman's incredible story. So whatever you can take home from her story, take it. Are we together? Njeri, your journey is not the easiest. That's as if it is our tutajiri, what one Your journey is not the easiest. No. But you are so brave. 
So even before you can share your story with us, that's what I want you to take home. Are we together? Yes. And you're my big sis. And yes. I say that with so much pride. You've been nothing but a big sister to me. And so yeah. please take us through your story. Yeah. Where do we start? <laughs> Let's go to Njeri that we are seeing here, being married at such a young age. Um, let, me st let me start. My story starts from when I was about three. Yes. I was three, probably didn't know much about it, but that's when my mother left and I was left with my dad. And so I was raised by a single dad. Most amazing man. Salute to him, Mr. Migwe. That's why I call myself Njeri Omegwe. Nothing can ever replace that name because that man has been incredible to me. So, yeah, yeah so took a grow. <laughs> why did mom leave? Uh, let me tell you the thing about my dad. Yes. Till today, I have no idea. My dad says that is not my business. That was between him and my mom. Mm -hmm. But he fought to stay with me. And so I stayed with him. My dad is a teacher. Yes. And I was his handbag. He carried me everywhere with him. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to complain and say that I missed out. I had an incredible childhood. I grew up well. My dad loved me. He took care of me. As I said, literally, I was his handbag. We'd go everywhere with him. I mean, we buried my grandmother in 2019. And everybody was like, Jerry, you're still swinging with your dad. You're a grown woman now. Mm -hmm. And that's the relationship I have with my yeah, dad. So yeah. for that one, I'm very grateful. And how many siblings were you? Um, we are three, mm -hmm. but I'm the one who was left. I have two brothers, Yeah. but I'm the one who so remained with my dad. So the brothers went with mom? Yeah. And mom left you? Yeah. It was very confusing. It, it is, it's, it's part of things I have processed and worked out. I have a good relationship now with my mom. Mm -hmm as good as it can ever get. It wasn't so. Yeah. Because of course, as a child, you suffer from abandonment issues and you always wonder, why do other people have a mom? Like, okay, for me, it wasn't why do other people have a mom, is why do their mom cook chapati? That was a very big deal growing yeah, up. Yeah, chapati. Eh? Yeah, chapati yeah. was a big deal. Yeah. You may not understand, but that for me was a lot. Yeah. People who know me know I love chapo. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. That's the reason. Yeah, so my dad couldn't cook chapati. He was not like that, <laughs> but right. Other than chapati, it was a good time. It was mm -hmm. then I was 16. Church girl, <laughs> see you chair lady. You know, everything right. Eh? You know, those people, wale mnambiangwa, ukwe kama njeri. Okay. Yeah, then you are a good girl. Yes. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. hey, baka nilikuwa na preach kwa kuruse. <laughs> Do not play. Eh? <laughs> nilikuwa naenda bingune. Heaven. Okay. That's where we were going. Yes. Until I met someone. Okay. And he distracted me from the path to heaven. Oh, mm -hmm. you were already walking to heaven. I was Jesus. So you he, he distracted you. To say me too, he Hey man. You know a good girl. Then you know a bad boy. Yeah. Because he was a bad boy. Eh. Where, brother? Hey. How how old were you here? I was fifteen. You were fifteen. And sixteen. When I found myself losing my virginity. At 16. And getting pregnant. Because somehow good girls never get the corner office. So my first sexual experience ended up with me having a child. I got pregnant and I gave birth. To yeah. Had someone taught you about sex? No. Like, no? No. So the first time you Who was having... going to teach me? I started my periods. I remember my dad told me, now Jerry, this is stay free. Those were pads. Zine kangwa hivi. Unatua saya break. Unatua saya lunch. Na unatua juni. Kukuja home. Unaoga. Now you don't play with boys. That's it. That's all the info I had. Yeah. I didn't even know what was happening mm -hmm. because I started my periods at 11. So I really had no information. And in fact, because I was the youngest in my class, anytime they would have like these talks to girls, I would be told to go out. I'm not yet. And yet I had the periods. And no one really ever bothered. And mm -hmm. I had no mother to yeah. really guide, guide me or walk me. And take you into, through And that. take me through this. Yeah. So here I was. I got pregnant. Yeah. I was in form four. Well, what was it about the boy that made you say, you know what? Oh, he was good looking. Oh, okay. With side bands, devil. Aqua and devil. A blue band. Ah, <laughs> liko tuwe mal, liko He was good looking. Okay. He still is though. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are very good looking children. They are a testament to us. Ah. Nelly ambuka tuyo hesabu lakini zozingine. They were good. He's good. He was good. So the first time you are sleeping with this man, you end up pregnant. Yes. Your first encounter, you yes. end up pregnant. Yes. And I was told by my friends, you can't get pregnant the first time. 
Oh. So you know the information which you tell each other, yes. you can't get pregnant. So how could I be? I didn't even know I was pregnant. So I'm vomiting in the morning and my dad is looking at me and telling me, Jerry, like that is in Greek to say, Jerry, what did you do? I'm like, me? Me? Did anything? No. So I'm vomiting. It, it, my pregnancy was like clockwork. Yani, you know all those things that you tick down. Yes. Hepreg, morning, nausea, morning sickness, uh -huh. kunona mashavu, you know, all those things. Mapua kukua kubwa, you know, the wax. So that was, that was it yes. for me. So my dad took me to, Met we were living in Karibangi South Flats. Yeah. So my dad took me to Metropolitan Hospital. Yeah. And the doctor did a, a test. Yeah. And I was discovered to be pregnant. I was like, I cannot be pregnant. It was only one time. It, it doesn't happen like this. I mean, I'm not Mary. Yeah. So certainly, yeah. So my dad said, you have to bring this man. Mimi ni let him to. So when he told me to go call the man, yeah. Mimi and Jerry, I went and got married. I never came back. And that's how I got married, by the way. And how old was he? 21. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. 16. He was 19, yeah. He was, so he was also a pretty yeah. young. Yeah. So instead of bringing back to your dad, you said, situwane. Apana, he hey. told me to nenda kwa father ko kudu, we come to kai. So many kenda kuka. Uh. That's how I got married. So you never went back home? No. Is dad looking for you? Yes. What are you doing about it? Nothing. We went and hid and got married. Ile ya... ya... Na pane ya oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So that's how I got married. Yeah. So but my dad is a teacher. And my dad is relentless. And my dad fought for me. And my dad came, found out where we were. And he told him, listen, my child has to go back to school. So she has to give birth and she has to go back to school. She has to finish school. This is non-negotiable. This is where I draw a boundary. Otherwise, I'm going to get you arrested because she's underage. Yes. And he really caused a lot of chaos. Yeah. And um, so I finished being pregnant. I gave birth, went back to school and finished my schooling. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Mariga. Okay. And then when I did, my dad said I had to go to college and I had to go to college. And he said he doesn't want anybody to pay for me. Yeah, he, he will for pay me. for it himself. That mm. is his responsibility. Mm. And so at that time, we already had conflict. I mean, we were pretty young. We really didn't know what we were doing. We were children, really, yeah. just playing house. Yeah, so, yeah. And so most half the time, I would be quow his mother's or home because we fought and I'm home. But my dad took care of my son, yes. made sure he went to school, play school so I could go to college. Mm. I finished college. I was lucky enough to get a job. And at that time, I think things had settled out a bit. Yeah. We moved out from his parents yeah. and we started our own journey. Okay. Yeah. So, why are you right now? Because you know what love is. Do you think you are in love? No. I think I was a child who had an idea of what love looked like and also for people who've come from broken homes, there's this idea inside us that we can, we can do this. We, we can, can build a we home. We can build a home. And because I, again, I come from a broken one. Mine yes. has to be stable. Mine has to be stable. Exactly. And so I kept on going back. Yeah. Even though there was no foundation, we really didn't have a good foundation. I wanted to prove, and my dad kept on telling me, this is not the man for you all the time. Yeah. Jerry, you need to know yourself. You're still a child. Now you're finished college, you've started work. I think just live by yourself and just see the world. There's nothing you know, mm -hmm. but I, I, I was so determined. Yes. I wanted to be a good wife. I wanted to, to prove to the world that just because I came from brokenness doesn't mean that I couldn't hold a home together. Mm -hmm. And so we started living together. Yeah. And because it was a marriage that wasn't foundationally sound, and so did there. So there was abuse. And when abuse, I mean, a slap here and there, a popo thrown on your face here and there, <laughs> a few things that, but it went on, but there was a lot of verbal abuse, minimizing. What would he say? Oh. <laughs> Whoa, first of all, honestly, and I'm saying this with all sincerity, and I know this may not sound big, but I, in this marriage, I knew I was the ugliest human being and I was living with him as a favor. And he made sure that that is what he told me. Every day. I mean, I don't know whether you understand waking up and somebody telling you, Manze siwe ni ugly. God, you're so ugly. I've never seen such an ugly person in my entire life. I'm doing you a favor staying with you. And so I believed him. 
I really believed I was ugly. I never used to look at the mirror. I still have a very skewed relationship with the mirror because I'm always like, <laughs> so anyway, so that was it. And he made it a call and I believed him. And I, if anybody told me you're beautiful, I'd be so like, of course they're not talking to me. They're obviously talking to someone else. Like who's beautiful here? Because words have power. Because words have, and this is somebody who I stayed with from 16 until I was 30. For 14 years? Yes. For 14 years? Yes. My boss can tell you how many times they helped me run. I, I got a job as a travel consultant. Yeah. And my own bosses can tell you how many times they moved me because I would come with a black eye here and they would ask me what happened. I'd be like, Nili gongo na mlango. The door hit me. I fell down the stairs. I always had excuses. I, I always had something to say. Because it's very hard to say. And the person I'm living yes. with is the one doing this to me. Yes. And... My ex-husband is a brilliant businessman. He is good with money and he's good with businesses and his business acumen is fantastic. I, I have to give him that. Yes. He may have been a bad husband, yeah. but he was an incredible businessman. And so his businesses grew. The money is there. The money was there. And I mean money, I'm not talking small, small money. I'm talking big money. I'm talking money that talks. When you enter a place. I'm talking the fact that I was driving a Range Rover. That is the kind of money. Yes, please. Just because. Hey, please. please. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So our businesses at, grew. At that young age, you yes. are driving a Range Rover. Yes. But nile, nilie kwa range. Nicheke, inakuanga nini? <laughs> so you are doing the exact. Una lilia kwa Range Rover. Yeah. Lakini bora Range Rover. No. Yeah. I was sad. I didn't have friends. First of all, I had been, I wasn't allowed friends. His family was my friend. And I wasn't seeing my dad as much because I don't know how I got excluded from having friendships. It was either church, work, home. That was it. That was the extent of my life. I had a driver. I had a bodyguard. Yeah, so it's not like I could come and have coffee with you. They'll go back and report me. And this is somebody, I remember I went to Hong Kong once. I just flew to Hong Kong. He saw me off at the airport here in Kenya. And I landed in Hong Kong and I found him waiting for me. Do you know how scared I was of him? I was terrified of this man. Because he would appear anywhere. It's like just magic. I was, Lynn, I used to be terrified. I was so scared. I, I can't even start explaining how scared I was. Because I didn't know when he would appear. So it's not like I could go out and have friends. This is somebody who I would find waiting for me outside of church. He, just anywhere, anything. Like let's say I'm meeting an old friend and then he would be like, where are you? And um, if I say a lie, he would tell me I can see you. So I was completely terrified. He had people following you around. I don't know, but he just put the fear of God in me. Yes. To even look at other people, other, I, I, I think, I don't know. I was his property. And, and he didn't want yes. me to be, I don't know, soiled or something. And at this point, are you talking to people? Do you have friends who no. you can confide? No, 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 no one. No. So this is just you? Just me. And how many kids do you have at this point? First, yes. he wanted another kid. But you know that thing that you had in the back of your mind that tells you do not get another child? Don't, don't. Have one child that you know if shit goes south, yes. you can take care of this child? Yeah. So I stayed 10 years before getting another child. I was afraid. I was, I was like, so he called a committee. He called my mother. He called his mother. He called my church people. And I came home and I found people in my house waiting for me. And they were like, why don't you want to have another child? And seeing your mother in the committee and knowing that she left, how, how was that like for you? Hurtful. I tell people I've given birth twice. And in all those occasions that I've given birth, I've always been like, did my mother feel what I feel? Because... Abandonment does that for you. Yeah? I hold my children very close to me. They are very dear to me because I never want my children to navigate the world and feel like they didn't have a mother. Yes. I don't ever want my children to look at me. Both children that I've given back and those I have adapted because I'm an adaptive mother as oh. well. Yes, I have two more children. Incredible ones yes. as well. Yeah. You are mom yeah. of four. Yeah. Good. And four cats. Yes. Yes. Very important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've met my cats. I've met them. 
Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, I never want my children to ever go and feel like they don't know what the love of a mother is. Mm. So, my children are very dear to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, he and, called the committee. Yeah. And so, they came and they spoke to me. And then I agreed to give birth. And then it... The committee is for you to give birth. Yeah. What did you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, so this committee is for you now yeah, to, to give birth. Yeah, to convince me. And I knew it was a bad... Well, so I gave birth. So I got pregnant the first time. And because we had all these scuffles, he beat me up. And I lost the first pregnancy. Yeah. And then subsequently I got pregnant again. And I lost it too. Because Vita too. Zahapa na pale. Then the third pregnancy. Um, I was seven months pregnant. When he beat me. And he left the country. And that night I started labor pains. And I was taken to hospital. I was 28 weeks pregnant. And three days of labor, three days of trying to save this baby. But she came and she fought. We were in ICU for a long time. He didn't come. He didn't show up. I was in hospital by myself with Ah, <sighs> yeah, and Tapa survived. She was 925 grams when she was born. She had a hole in her heart, and she had... <sighs> she had ARDS, and she stayed in hospital for a long time. He came after two months, and he didn't come to hospital. He, he didn't come to hospital. He was just somewhere. He said he was afraid of coming to hospital. Lynn, I had held this baby and myself together. I don't know how hard, you know, ICU can be. I refused to go home, so I stayed at Mata. And he didn't come. And of all the things he has ever done to me, that hurts the most. As that he was never there for his daughter. Can I get some serviettes, please? Ray? I kind of forgot to so, put them here. here. Yeah, but he came after two and a half months. He'd been in Kenya for two weeks. And it's actually the doctor who forced him to come and told him, you have to man up and come see your daughter. Like, how was that like for you? I mean, it was hard. I had, I'd, you know, a parent is a person who supports you. You have a sick child. I just want somebody to tell me we are going to be okay. This child had like three times or four times been taken to the brink of death and had to be brought back. She's a fighter. I mean, I'm talking about a child who is still now fighting for her health and for her life. And he didn't come. He didn't come. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she came out of hospital. We went home. And when we were home, <laughs> the second day of us being home, she turned gray. She just, she was a kid. She just turned gray. And we had to take her back to hospital, back to ICU, back to starting all over again. This time he was there and he was like, oh, I can see how hard it was for you. And I'm telling you, till today, Lynn, I try to forgive that because it was lonely. It was hard. And even when we returned her back to hospital, the time she turned gray, the doctor said she's dead. And I remember I just walked out of matter. I was in a night dress and no shoes. And I just walked, walked, walked. In fact, the people who met me, met me in Capitol Hill looking like a mad woman. First of all, remember I've been in hospital for over three months yeah. with a sick child. That means my hair looks mad, yeah. you know? Because yeah. I went into labor prematurely, my hair wasn't done. Yeah. So it look, I look like a mad woman. So I met somebody who told me, your child is not dead. Because everyone was looking for me. Because I was just crying and wailing and walking. And I was like, God, you've let me down. I wanted this child so badly. This is a child I prayed for. Because yes. I remember just... Um, after the two miscarriages, it was very hard for me to give birth. Yeah. And so I remember just lying on the floor of church and praying and asking God, give me a baby. Because I was being beaten for not having a baby mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. So I was just praying to God and just telling God, God, please give me a baby. I remember washing the church and just crying and praying and telling God, God, give me a baby. I don't know I, if you've ever prayed scriptures, because I remember praying scriptures. I remember just telling God, it's the way you remembered Hannah, just remember me. And here is the baby. Mm -hmm. And I thought I would go home with this baby and the baby's dead. Yes. And I lost my mind. 
And they had to walk me back and show me the baby is here. She's not dead. She fought and she lived. Topaz is 16 now. Yeah, she's 16. Yes. She's my child. And she fights so hard. She's okay most of the time. It's incredible how she still gets sick a lot of times. Yeah. And most people don't know, but we've been struggling and struggling with this child. But she fights back. She's a child that has decided, I will survive. In spite, we had a scare last year, I think yes. last year, last year, but yeah. one, where she, she was diagnosed with having a tumor in her head yeah. and so on and so forth. And she's still fighting. She's, she's still, still fighting. here. She did her exams mm. and got a B, oh, wow. a B plus. Mm. Even though six months of that year, she missed school. Oh, wow. She missed school because yeah. she was sick all the yeah. time. Yeah, so we're here. So she's in form five. Oh, lovely. And, yeah. Anyway, so pushback. Yeah. Two years later, we are living in Kileleshwa. We are doing good, impeccably well. And I, my mom asked me for money. Now I'm working for, with him. Yes. And I had, he wasn't paid. I wasn't getting paid. So I didn't have money. My mom needed some money. And because, you know, you want to give your mom things. I went into the safe. There was a lot of money and I was like, nobody will know. I was traveling to China. So I was like, who would know if I remove 10,000? Like if you remove 10,000 out of 10 million, I removed 10,000. I gave it to my mom. And I was at the gym because I had to maintain a certain size. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Allow, allow me to take you just a little back. Mm -hmm. Mom is coming back in your life. Yes. Is she giving you an explanation as to why she had left you? I went to look for my mom. Let me just be clear. I went to look for my mom. I wanted a mom. I wanted to be loved by my mom. So I went to look for my mom. And so I started having a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're having a relationship with your mom, and there's this idea you have money. You know, you can have money, but you don't have money. By that, I mean, you can have actual money, but see, Yako, easy person sees Yako. This money belongs to him. You, you are just there. You are the wife yeah. who manages the companies, the, you know, everything. But the money is not yours. Not I really yours. didn't have money. Lee. Yeah. I just looked like I had money. If I wanted shopping, I would be taken to London and would do shopping, things around that. Yeah. But I didn't have physical money. You had nothing for yourself. No. Yeah. And then I was just good. Hey, Manzelina was a good wife. Manze, my wife material was me. Eric. Unapewa pesa. Even 10 million. I go shopping for things for the shops. Yes. And I would never touch a cent. I am the kind of person who would come with books. I took a taxi from here to the airport, airport to here. I ate 35 shillings. I was that kind of a person. I honestly had so much integrity. Because that's what my dad taught me. That's oh, I honestly thought we were building something for our children. So why would I take the money? Mm. And I didn't miss anything. If I wanted, you know, things, I would get them. Yes. Plus, anyway, I was already ugly. So I wasn't going to struggle with a lot of things. Yeah? Yeah. Anyway, so first forward that. He found out I took the 10,000. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. Yeah. I don't know that he counted the money. I was in the gym. He told me, come home now. So I went home. Lynn. It was so bad. My child was in the room, so she saw. But I, I was unconscious. And so he was so scared that he had killed me. That is how bad it was. That he put me in a bathtub with water and left. Closed the house and drove away. So if I was to die... They would say you drowned. They would say. But I, my housemaid found me, tried to wake me up and revive me. Somehow that day my son wasn't in school and my daughter was screaming in our room. And when he hit me and I fell, I fell on the dresser. And the dresser was, our bedroom had marble furniture. Yes. Yeah? So I fell, you know marble is like stone. So when I so fell, I was unconscious for a very long time. <laughs> So my, my, my house girl, she's called Maggie. She called my mother. And my mother came. And my mother was like, we are living with you now. And that is when he walked in. Lynn, 
If you saw that room, it was full of blood. There was blood. I don't know how blood got to the ceiling, but there was blood. And my mother saw it and my mother was like, Jerry, we are leaving with you now. I'm not leaving you behind. Pack your children, we are going. Cool. So he walked in. Yeah. And he told my mother, let me speak to her. I, I, I don't know Lynn, but he convinced me to stay. I, 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 I look back and I'm like, that is the day I should have gone. But I didn't go. He somehow managed to convince me. And he apologized and, you know, nee, 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 nee. and he was so apologetic. He was on his knees and he's like, this is a father of my children. Where am I going? Why is he doing? I don't know, Lynn. I just stayed. And, you know, we went. Nikabaiwa Gari has bought a brand new BMW X5 baby. And I've, I've yeah. And um, after that, we moved. We moved to, you know, there's Runda yeah. and then there's Roslyn. Yes. So we moved to Roslyn. Yeah, so yeah. we moved to Roslyn. Yeah. Roslyn is... Kidogo up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We moved there. Yeah. The kids were in good schools. Everything was going well. Yeah. We were really young. I mean, I'm talking about people who are not yet even in... Me, I wasn't even 30. We are living in Roslyn. We, yani, we are the people who now... Nowadays, you call couple goals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. You were couple goals. We were couple goals. I was traveling all over the world. Shopping, buying things cars. for the shops, for the business. We had um, shops here in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Uganda. We, we, we were doing well. Yeah. I was so sad, Lynn. I had no friends. The only friend I had was probably Jesus. And when I was being beaten, Jesus wasn't there. But yeah, cool things. The last time he beat me, he beat me so badly. I don't even remember what you were asking. We were in the bathroom. I, yeah, I think I was brushing my teeth. Mm. And he asked me something about the shop. Or somebody, no, wait, somebody had come to the shop and said that was beautiful. And somehow he had informers who would tell him things like those. Ah. So he said, Our Baba wako kuja kwa duka. And this is a fit man who was boxing. Lin Nili Chapwa, I don't hear from this year. So we went, so now I couldn't hear. So, you know, when one year is hard, even the other year wasn't compensating. So I couldn't hear for like 24 hours. So he had to take me to hospital. And the doctor is telling me what happened. I fell in the bathtub. And all this time I'm being beaten because Sitaki Aibu, you know, you don't want the neighbors to hear. I never screamed. Lin, I never used to scream. So Ulkona and Chapman said, like that. You know, because I don't talk. This, Aibu. Which neighborhoods are this? You are screaming like a mad woman. So you're just taking it all in, mm. Mm, like that. So nobody knew. So he, he carried me because I was really small then and took me to his car and drove me to the hospital. Upper village market, and the doctor is, is telling me now when we're in the curtains, Do you need help? But I am so scared of this man, I don't want to tell him. My ear is bleeding. I'm really telling the doctor, He's telling me, I can help you. I can help you run. Because this man is going to kill you. Hi. And, but I'm like, This man has a gun. He's going to shoot me. So I'm, I'm looking at him shooting me and the doctor, and I'm thinking, Where uh, can I hide? Yeah. And so. The doctor treated me and yes. I lost hearing yeah. on this year. Yeah. Talk, talk to me about dad. You said you have a great relationship with dad. Why were you not going to talk to him? Because I was ashamed. I didn't want to tell anybody. I became such an expert at doing makeup. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. What was, what was I going to tell my dad? All the time my dad used to tell me, Njeri, you can live. And all the time he would tell me, you guys are so poor. Where are you going? And there's that battle inside of yourself. Maybe I should just let my kids finish school and then I go. I need to stay for my kids. Let me stay for my kids. Mm -hmm. How am I going to support these kids? Yes. I had left formal employment. I was yeah. working for him. I had no savings. No career of your no own. No career now of my own. Yes. And I remember when... Let me tell you what snapped me out of this marriage. He just told me one day. Just looked at me and said, you know what? You can't leave. You can't leave. Mm. Even if I came with this excavator and removed you from this house, you wouldn't leave. And I don't know why that triggered me. That day I just looked at him and I was like, is this man okay? This man doesn't even live in this house. He was living at, um, what is this hotel at, at Village Market called? Mm. At his tribe. tribe. Yeah, tribe. That's where he used to live. He used to just come home to change. And I would see receipts of him. I would see pictures of him with women. And I was like, why am I living like this? I mean, I don't care how poor we are, so what? And you know what? I left. I, I just left. I didn't even know that beyond Runda, 
you know when you come from from Runda, yeah. I mean Roslyn, if you drive down like this, now where I used to live, opposite they built Roslyn Mall. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. My house was opposite Roslyn Mall. And I just came out. I didn't even know there was Ruaka. Me, my friend, me, I was that protected, that naive. I just went down and I looked for a house. And I found a house in a place called Moshada. And I nikakomboa. Nikanza kusema one by one, small, small things. I started buying myself stuff. And you left with the kids? No. You the left. day he just told me that, yeah. I had already started buying myself things. Yes. In this like a small house. So I, I just, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm leaving. I took my car, the one he bought for me, and I went. Mm. I didn't take his kids because I was like, if I take his kids now, and I don't even have any prospects of a career, then how am I going to feed them? Let me go, get myself settled, and then come for my children. Yeah. So I left. Oh. And uh, <laughs> um, he came for his car, though. He did. I was shopping at Nakumat. Uh, there was a Nakumat in the middle of town. And I, I parked the car. I was just shopping for my house. And when I came out, now I was starting to look for clients because I was doing interior design. Yeah. Uh, when I came out, I was looking for a car. What is this called? AA. So I'm looking for the car under other cars because, like, where is the car? Like, how? Gary Benda. And this man just came and took the car and he left. And, yeah. So it was another two years of back and forth, yes. back and forth. And then he brought, he brought, Topaz would cry every day. She was five. And one day, Ali Mweka took a hammer. Hwa. Kam Mweka na media kia kam later. Because she had her own personal nanny. A kawa later. So he supported us. He supported the schooling. These kids were in schools that I could not even afford school fees. My friend. These kids were in international schools. Yes. My friends can tell you, my child knows to speak Israeli in the last three years. She didn't know. And the first time she came to my house, she was like, oh, mommy, the way I'm feeling myself, I'm living in a whole two bedroom. Mm. Hmm? Mm. This child has come into my house and asked me where is the rest of the house. <laughs> she had never seen anything like that. She said, mommy, where is the rest of the house? And I'm like, hey, <laughs> brave, hey. <laughs> hey. To Queensland or something. Hey, my friend. <laughs> hey, you're like, manze. Ati, <laughs> mommy. My friends live in Runda, they live in the Gidigiri. Gi and it, man, and it, was a bit, it was not a small, okay, it was small, but like Manze to maintain respect. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Even when she would come with like her friends' children, mm. they'd be like, your mother has a nice dollhouse. And I'd mm. be like, wow. Ah. It's a dollhouse. This child had never been in a matatu. Tumengia kwa matatu, tumekane hapo mbele, and ona dereva na kula. What are they? Mira. Yes. She's like, is he a goat? <laughs> Like, hide this child. Yes, hide please, her. Please. You know, we'd go anywhere with her and people would be like, and I'll tell people, we've just landed. Yes. You know that one of Maka, you're like, shh, don't talk. Okay? Yeah, okay. yeah. That's how it was. But she adjusted. Because what kids need is love. And after like two years, he said he's not paying school fees. So here I am with a child who does not even know how to speak a word of Swahili, who only knows international schools, and there is no school fees. And a sick child to boot, huh? But my shaninani, my job picked up. I was able to start having like big time clients. Yes. I was doing commercial residence. And <laughs> I was okay. I was doing well. I did move from that house. Yeah. It was like there. I was able to buy myself a car. We were doing well. You, but you had peace of mind. I had peace of mind. Yeah. Um, I meet this person. He's a cousin. And he tells me he has gotten this job. And I'm like, okay, fine, cool. Uh, it's an interior work. So he has the LPO. Yeah. But he doesn't know how to do interior because he's a graphics designer. Yes. So we go. I take the job, I use my money, I take a loan lien to do this job. I, I had like savings of about a million point five. The job was worth 4.5. We do it well, we were going to get 7.5 million. Good profit. Good profit, which we are going to share. Yeah. But I'm the one who's bringing in the capital. So I put my car, a few things I had as collateral for a loan. And I took a loan lien and I did the job. Then... My wonderful cousin, 
went and got paid and disappeared. Remember the collateral? I wish he had just left me my money and taken the profits. He took everything. Do you know I went to that office and I started crying. I was wailing when he told me, but see, Muli, Uli kuja Friday nani kawalipa. I'm telling them, Uli kalipa nani. And I started wailing. And in three months, Lynn, the bank came, took my car, my land, things I had bought for myself, everything. Lynn, Did you I, call him? Well, he disappeared. Oh, God. We went back to Shagukwao. We looked for my camera everywhere. And he was nowhere to be found. And this is your cousin? Yes. And so, Nikachotwa. And when I mean Nikachotwa, Lynn, Unachotwa, Gwakila Kitumba Kakijiko. So I am here. I went into depression. I had nothing. Are you trying to call him, your husband? No, I took the kids back. To, to ah, him? Bro, Aji Sasa, <laughs> we are going to live in the streets with the kids. No, no. what These are your kids too. Where, where are you so I was sleeping. I have a, my best friend is called Mahihi. Yeah. Then I would disappear. This chick had to look for me. Because I was so ashamed. I, I don't know why failure comes with shame. And so I would disappear. I would sleep under the bridge. I would sleep with a watchman. Then she would look for me. And I would still come on Facebook and make jokes. Meanwhile, I am dying. Is that what, isn't that what we do yes. on social media? We are happy. Nobody knew what was going through my life. But in real life, you are crashing. I, was, I would go to the office I had and sit with the watchman. They would be like... Mbono take kwenda home, I'm like, ah, aje, say si niusi, kuna tika nene nishikuwe na hapa? Wee tukai tu. Then I remember I would sleep in another friend's office. I would tell him I have work to do. I need to just use his office because I don't have an office for now. And I would sleep in his office. Thank you, Anjo. He didn't even know. I think I told him this year. I told him, remember the days I used to come here? I didn't have a place to sleep. Meanwhile, my friends are looking for me and I do not also want them to know that the I am truth. the truth. So I'm hiding. I had three dresses, I remember. And then Monday, I sat down and I said, Hey, see, I have a father. I went home. Oh. I didn't, it's not that I didn't have a home. I had a home. You went home. And I went home. And I, I, I got home. And I climbed the sofa and I slept for three days. I didn't wake up. My dad was like, okay. When I woke up, he asked me, Eh, Merudi? Merudi? Nini? Nikambe, Dad, I'm staying here with you. Tunakaa hapa, tunakaa we are staying here. I'm going to become a farmer. My father said, Niliku educate, ndio kuja kuwa farmer. With all this education, we are going back to Nairobi. What do you need? I said, I, I, I don't know, Dad. He said, we can go back. I can talk to Mr. Kaka. You can get your job back. He literally called my former boss. This is 10 years after I've left work. And my former boss was like, she was one of the best workers you've ever had. Tell her to come back. Oh. Oh. And I went. Yeah. I went. Yeah. My dad got me a house. Yeah. Got me a I didn't, he got me a mattress, yeah? A mattress, a few clothes, he paid for my house. And I went back to Nairobi. Yes. Called Mahihi and I told her, Mahihi, I have a place, I, I have a home, I am going for my child. Mahihi is like, we only have a mattress. I'm like, I don't care, I want my child back. By the time I got my baby back, she had been told I died. That is top us. Yeah. She had so been I told... went to school, yes. I got her, because I knew there was no other way I would get her. So you I knew took her from school. school. So I went to school. I got her. She had been told you died. Yeah. By she the hadn't dad. seen me like for a year. So she, she's like, she's afraid of me because I'm on a ghost. Hey. She, mom. Man. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. So here we were. And, uh, and yeah. where was the first one still? Now this is what happened. Yeah. My son. I don't know what he had been told. He never used to talk to me. He just refused to talk to me. We didn't have a relationship. <sighs> anyway. I got him back though. Got him back. It's been a process of healing for both of us. Of us just yeah. uncoupling things we've been told. Them realizing that I'm not the person they thought they, they had been told, told about. You are, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can lose your children. Yeah. So I took Topaz back and um, yeah, 
and we started living in a <laughs> we didn't even have a stove. I got nakulanga biku hizi za ginger na maj. And I would tell to her, do you want to go back home? And she's like, no, mom, I'm okay. I'm okay here with you. You eat it. You do this. You eat in school. Because the school fees was paid. Yeah. You eat in school. Come full. Come full. We'll be okay, mom. I didn't have money. I was still struggling. And I remember one of my... I went back to work. And this man called my boss and told him, he's going to shoot him if he doesn't release his wife. I have not been with you for five years. Why are you still threatening my life? Yeah. At this point, had it ever occurred to you, you need to report this one? No, I never reported. I never did. I, never did. I was just, I don't know. I was just leaving. I was just, there's something called trauma bonding. Now that I work in GBV, that makes you sympathize. You have a bond, an in, a bond with your abuser that is very hard to break. This is a man who made, I had a business. I started a business in Ngara. I had a cafe. It was called Cafe Bella. He made it impossible for me to run that cafe. All right? Until I had to close it. And when I closed it, I was like, I'm not going back to him. So I opted to commit suicide. So I took 400 clubs. That, uh, no, 400 mm. tablets. Yeah, tablets. Yes. And because I'm Jerry and I'm a nice human being, after I took the tablets, I left the door open because I did not want to be inconvenient for the person who would find my body. So I was there. I was sleeping in and out of unconsciousness. And guess who walked in? Him. Guess who took me to hospital? Him. So I was taken to Avenue Hospital. Bro, being removed that medicine is the worst thing that can happen to your life. They put an, a tube inside your nose. It goes all the way to your stomach. And then they pump it. So each medicine comes out. You can feel it too. Vile inatoka kwa tumbo. Inatoka kwa mapo. You, you can imagine you had 400. It took like two hours. By the time they were done, I was like, wow, I will never commit suicide again. It's not worth it. Yes. It's not. But it was. I, I had given up him. Oh, then he decided to commit me into a psychiatric ward. And so after I was treated for the suicide, I found myself in a psychiatric ward. Yeah? Do you know when you're not mad and you're in a place a, where people are, are mad? Yes. And you're trying to tell the people you are not mad. Yes. And nobody believes you. Yes. Because everyone there says they are not mad. It's, oh, yeah. No one is mad in a mad center. It's, it's, it's bad. Yeah. It's, cr it's crazy. Because you're here with mad, they're mad. But you are not. Like mungina na kuchapa na kunyanganya food. And you're just then, you're like, wow. But sa hii reaction diyo wanaona ni wazimu. Eh, sasa ukifanya hivi pia daktari ya nakuletea dawa. Oh. Shit. I know they have to, ha, ha. So I was in the south wing of Avenue Hospital where they take the. Yeah. Yeah, mad people. And so, the doctor said, he said I'm depressed. And so they wanted to do EST, which is electroshock therapy. And I remember begging doctor, I mean, I even, I knelt and I told him, look, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Don't do this. Don't do this to me. I am not mad. I'm not mad. Don't, don't do the thing. Because I knew what it was. And I'm like, I swear, I take my dad's number. No one knows I'm here. Just ask my dad if I'm mad. And my family doesn't know. He called my dad. My dad picked the call. My dad was like, my daughter is where? The person who brought him there is the abuser. I'm coming to pick my child. And that doctor, I'll, he passed on. He used to have a clinic at Poster, but he didn't do it. I'm so grateful I still have my sanity because I don't know what would have happened if they shocked my brain. I don't know. But that's... So when I say I have a good dad, that's what I have a good dad. He stood for me in places. He came for me yeah. and removed me from hospital. Yeah. And so, yeah. And he helped me set up now the business I was telling you. Yes. The one I set up at Ngara, the cafe. Yeah. Yeah. It was my dad's man. Yeah. And he couldn't understand how I came from having a cafe 
to committing suicide. Because I felt like, again, I felt like everything I'm touching is failing. failing. Nothing is working. It's failing. And everything is failing. Lynn, I felt like such a failure. Mm. And so it was easier to die than to just live. live. Anyway, so we started the divorce. And it ended now, the time when I took Topaz. This time you had been legally Matched. married? Yeah, yeah. We got yeah. legally married at some point. Yeah. Fantastic idea. Ah, uh, so we went. Uh, we went to remember the last, the last, the last, the last day. We went court. And nearly when me chapa lean, when me chapa. See, you remember I'm struggling. I'm trying to get myself back together, and he's just looking at me and I'm saying, "Me chapa, my beat." On top of being ugly, say you my beat, bro. Hey, it was March 2016. And he was like, let me give you a lift to town. And I was like, well, me, I didn't have money. I'd already walked to court. Me, I, was, I was okay with being given a lift. And so between the court to town, and he took the longest possible route so that he could have the enough time to abuse me and tell me all miserable things, the way I'll never get anyone to love me, the way I'll never get married, the way I'm just so horrendous and ugly. And... Mm. So I'm just taking it in me. I'm like, hey, Gary, for now, I don't care. Me, I don't care. 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 Then he removes his phone. Yeah. And he shows me the girl he's married. And bro, she was beautiful. He has good taste in women. Probably not the one. I'm the one, probably the only one he didn't have good taste in marrying. But the other ones, then she was beautiful. And then you know, she said, see, see who's replacing you. See how beautiful she is. Can you even? Say you unajua, you have no money. Umechapa lean. Hiyo wivi yako inanuka tu vitu zingine tu hata zime make sense. So we go to Zile za wash. But by the way, I told him she's very beautiful. Marry her and treat her better than you ever did for me. I actually told him that. I told him when you marry her, treat her well. Yeah. Treat her well. She's like she's pregnant. This I'm like Now you're immune to this. Hey, things. by the way, Lynn, I've gone through so much things. Me, by the way, there's nothing now that you can tell me that can hurt me. You can't. I've already been told the worst by somebody I thought I loved. Actually, no. Actually, I love this man for some weird reason. I did. I loved him. Incredible, mm. too. Mm. And, yeah. And so he dropped me in town. Remember, I'm living in that car, car house. Mm. And I was also doing a lot of charity work around cancer children in Kenya yeah. all this time because yeah. that's who I am. Mean, that's who I am. That's who you are. Every Thursday I would go to Kenya to see cancer children, Wadwani, spend time with them. And so somewhere along that route I met a man. And this man was like he came, we met. And yeah. And uh, the rest If we were to aganisho e soja unakaa je hapa kisoja so come to kae njani nikasema ala hey i was like na goza nini na goza nini kwanza nilikuwa na nini ya kuongoza mimi na mtoto wangu tukahama tukaenda kuishi yes eh me i was a homosexual bana i just live moved in with somebody because he had a house let's not even start lying to each other everybody has different decisions why they this one we, we just moved in mm, mm. And so I, that's how I got married the second time. Ndio hivyo tu tuingie. Tuingie tukaenda. Unaona tu vile nilimarika the first time. Ndio hiyo again. Ndio tena nili repeat. Yes. Anyway, so I met this man. We got married. Him he went all the way home. We had a proper traditional kuyu wedding. We did all the things, right? And we started living together. Mm. I took his children to be my kids. Yeah. And you became a blended family. And you became a blended family. But Lynn, you see, marriage is just marriage. It's just marriage. You did not get into this marriage for the right reasons. Good. Either party. Good. And so I don't even know this person. Yes. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And my happy marriage lasted for two years. And then I realized I do not know the person I have married. And so I was like I have made another mistake. And so I went into depression. Uh six months I didn't leave my bed. I just used to sit in my bed and cry. Because I was like who is this person? And my friends would ask me, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm okay." <laughs> I'm okay. There's nothing wrong. They're like, "Why don't you ever leave your bedroom?" 
Like, nothing. I'm okay. Njeri, you've made a bad decision. Tell us. Come and stay with us. No, I'm okay. Like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm fine. And so I was fine. And so I, 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 you know, I portrayed that I was very fine. Yeah. And it ended? Last year, yes. Last year? Yes. So when you came to visit me, yeah. that was my house. I had already moved out in July. This was now your new house yes. with your kids. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, and when I left, I left with all the kids. He's mine, everyone. Aku akujia? Alikujia moja juzi. Juzi ya juzi. As in literally like yes. three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. The kids loved you? Yeah, the kids, they were okay. We just moved. They're like, oh, unaenda? Tunaenda? So we went. And so we moved. All five of us, me and five kids and four cats. So nine. Yes. Okay, five and cats. No, nine. Nine. I'm a farm yes. mom too. Yeah. So I moved out. Only for me to now come and discover I do not know. Who this person Let me is. say this. We hear people saying, Bibi Amuzi Akisema. I did not know my husband was a thief. You, we doubt them. And we doubt them. I am telling you, I was married to a man I don't know. You know those things that you realize later. I don't mm. know where this man works. Mm. I don't know what he does. Yeah. I don't know anything about him. Yeah, that's that's the realization that after I moved out is when I realized I didn't know this man. Yeah, and I had blundered again. And I had blundered, and I'm discovering these things as I'm running a GBV organization. I don't know whether you understand how bad that is. Hold on, you are out here on the socials. Yeah, GBV. Yeah, usikimia, yeah. but unakimia. Yeah. It took time for me to realize, as I'm speaking, I remember I was typing something. No, actually, no. Somebody called me and told me their story. And I was like, this sounds, as I'm giving them advice, I start breaking down and crying. Because I'm like, why am I telling them the things I'm going through? And I was like, I cannot be fronting this, this thing. And I am miserable and I am unhappy. And I am faking it out here. And I'm telling women, you can leave. I literally have safe houses for women. Yeah? And I am here and I'm and I left. And this time I didn't even think. Everything. Yes. Plus the children, plus the, the plants cats. and the cats. And we moved. That was last year. Yes. And I've known you for how long now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so I did, yeah. 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 So you just decided, let me start again. Cindy, what was different this time that made you say, no, I can't. I can't lie to people anymore. Lynn, imagine fronting, you are out here showing people empathy and compassion and you don't have the same compassion for yourself. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. And I walked out. I was like, I can't be preaching. Water water and drinking wine mm. and so i walked out mm. there was no violence there was no violence it's yeah. just the strings of lies yeah and i was not going to be part of that yeah so i left mm -hmm. left with the kids he came for his kid so this is the thing um when i met him you had he was living with his niece his brother's child and so he only came for his biological child he left the rest so those are my babies by default. And I love them to death. They have a mother in me. And they are not going anywhere. Mm. They are mine. Yeah. Uh, uh, talk to me about the shame. Why, why is it that it's so hard for Today's us? when I'm talking about it. I have to, never, who knows? Only my friends know. They're very, my family who are here somewhere. Oh. Oh. They're the only people who know. Not even people who work with. That's it. I didn't tell anyone. They just think I moved. They don't know why I moved. How was I going to look at people and tell them, hey, I've been in a fake marriage. The hell it was. Yeah. The person it was hard to accept was my dad because he really liked him because there was a way he put himself out there mm. with so much. He had a front. Yes. And, but the person behind it. Yeah was completely a different Yeah, person. don't abusers do that. They yeah. are good to your family yes. so that even when you go and tell yes. your family, 
this person is doing this to me, they look at you like, ah, you are Zifanya. Like, don't they do that? Like, for real, yeah? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. How is singlehood? Fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, for the first time in my life, I can say I've been single. I've always either been married or married. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting mm. to even just know yourself, to gather your thoughts, to, to be able to, and right now, yeah. I can be able to move the way I want to move in terms of doing the work I do. You know the work I do. Yes. To be able to go and sleep in the safe house without having to be answerable to anybody. To just do the work I do with so much more empathy. Yeah. And so much more compassion. Yeah. And yeah. Like you, you said something, you and your kids. Because yeah. there's always this one, especially with parents who cannot even co-parent, they'll always try to turn one kid against um, the other parent. Huh? How was it like now? How is it like now for you and your kids? In this city too? No, like how is the relationship? Like, with me and my kids? Yes. Let me tell you. Oh, because of the things they had been told about you? We had to unpack it and to heal. Healing is a process. It's not a linear. Healing is very dynamic. You have to be incredibly honest with yourself. Look at yourself and look at the failings that you had mm. and tell your child, I'm sorry. Mm. And I know as African parents, we say we don't say sorry. I really told my children, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I failed as a mother. I'm sorry I left you behind. I'm sorry. And I hope that we can get building blocks to build our relationship mm. back. And so we have. Mm. And so we have. And you guys, you're okay? We one step at a time? One step at a time. Yeah. And you, so, you said something, apologizing to our children. Yes. It doesn't happen often. But you need to. That's how you mend the fences. I was young. I, I didn't know much. I didn't know better. But I know that I want to be a good mother. Mm. And for me, that is very important. Yeah. If anything else, I want to be remembered as a mother to my kids and a good mother at that. Mm. And also a good person. Yes. And you can't say you're a good person if you're not working Towards becoming a, becoming good a good person. Yes. Towards looking at what failings do you have. I look at myself now and I know where I failed. Mm. And I know I had this romantic idea of what love looks like. Oh, don't we all? Of why I wanted to hold on to a marriage. Both marriages. And for me, this time I was like, you know what? I'm not going to spend another 15 years being unhappy. Yes. Fronting to people and yeah. living with somebody I really don't yeah. know. Yeah. And this man, when he came for his child, he told me he had a whole other family. So I was living with a man who had another family. That's it. Hence the importance. And I just looked time. at him and I was like, what? You have a whole what? Family. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. He had a whole other family. Yeah. I was busy saving people's lives and I had somebody who had a whole other family. So take yeah. your time. Take your time. It's never that serious. Mm. Yeah. Like, have you forgiven yourself? Have I? What do you think? I think you have. I have. Good. I'm a human being yes. and I'm fallible. Yes. And you're beautiful. <laughs> no. Yes. I'm, I mean it. <laughs> like she's beautiful. We are working towards that. Oh, yeah. Like, like you, no, you are working towards what? Okay. Thank you. You, you are working towards okay, what? Okay, thank you. So because you. beauty is here. Look at you. You are gorgeous. Hey. <laughs> Let me tell you these things so that even when a man tells you it's a bonus. <laughs> you know, you miss it. Yeah, we are not going back. No. Yeah. yeah. But, but looking back, what would you say you, you regret most? Being in a hurry. First of all, let me say this. And I'm saying this to people who could be in the same situation. There are people out here who are rooting for you. And I've had people root for me. And I, am, I have an amazing, amazing, amazing friends who turn to be my family. The sisters I never had. And they're here today. Yeah. Yeah. And they've rooted for me from day one. And I, let me tell you, make friends. And make real friends. Friends Good. who will stand for, friends who will go for battle for you. Yes. On your behalf. Yeah. And I have that. And, and I, it's incredible. Beautiful. Make that. And I keep telling Be rooted. So sometimes family, me, family ain't blood. No. Family are the people who you meet along the way. Yes. And they can even go to battle for you. Yes. Yeah. 
choose and choose wisely. I, I see people talking about fake friends and I'm like, I you not going to fake friends. Yes. Me, I've had fake husbands. I've not had fake friends. Oh, yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah. Make friends and be there for your friends. You know, you don't, friendship is two way. It can be you are the only one who is the friend. Has issues. Yeah, so, you know. It's, idea, it's not that we don't fight, we do, but we make up. Yes. Yeah. How is you and mom? Me and mom, we're good. We're good. I, I can pick my phone and call my mom. Why? Because she's my mom. <laughs> Apart from that? Because I, I forgive her. It's something you work towards. I forgive her. She left me and it happened. And... Thank you. Mm -hmm. It happened and yeah. it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, like, I mean, some people are here watching you right now. Mm -hmm. I know getting out of abusive relationships is not the easiest thing. No, it's to not. Do. Especially when you are mom and you have kids. Yes. You want to say, but let me stay longer for my kids. Let me stay so that my kids can finish school. But it's doing something to you emotionally. And we are not advocating for singlehood. But for me, I always say, why stay in a place full of pain, right? And I know it's not as easier said, like, oh, talker, ender. To those people who are here and they are a bit stuck, what would you want them to take home from your story? Imagine you can live. And the earlier you do, the better. First of all, your children watching you being beaten. Is the worst thing you can subject to your children. This is a conversation I'm having with my kids because they're big. And they tell me how they felt, how, how defeated and how, how they, they, they didn't know what to do to protect yes. me, you know? Yeah. And let me tell you, this time around, when this man came back, because he came to this house to pick his kid and yeah. he started talking smart, yeah. my kids stood up for me. Oh, yes. And they were like, let me tell you something, sir. Do not talk to my mother in that tone. They were not going to sit there helplessly yes yeah and it comes from you having empowered them exactly having seen that you fought let me tell you don't stay in a marriage don't stay don't leave leave tables where love is no longer being served oh yes uh, just leave leave it's leave. it's start small yeah you that mattress start with it yes just start yeah but let me tell you do not subject your children children pick this up let me tell you what happens to children quickly um for girls they can become incredibly promiscuous. They can get into early pregnancies. All these are reasons why you're sitting with a child. And for, for boys, they can become very aggressive because these are things that they see. And what you're doing to your children is you're giving them something we call ACE, which is Adverse Childhood Trauma Experiences. And it's very hard to heal from that. And your girls will gravitate towards yes. men who abuse them yeah. and your children. Yeah. So it's 50-50 chances. Either they'll become very timid or they will become mm. abusers themselves mm. because abusers are... See, mm. and then they see this is how power, this is the power dynamics in mm. a relationship. Mm. And so they become like that. Or they become very timid and withdrawn. You do not yeah. want to do this to your children. No, you don't. Look at the kind of nation we have. It's either people are very violent or people are very timid. It Look at us. Because we come from a government that abuses us very much. That now we become victims. And to take away our victimhood, we become abusers. That's why we have to go to Facebook. We have to go so it's, it's, it's something. Yes. It, stems it comes. From it stems from somewhere. You mm. need to start asking yourself these hard questions. Don't expose your kids to abuse. If you can walk away, go back home. Come to us. Talk to us. We have therapy. Talk to Shazmin. I mean, we have people who are out here who are rooting for you. Yes. Who can help you walk through this experience? Yeah. We'll give yeah. you a small place. Mm. You stay with us for a bit. Yes. And then. You can integrate back to society, but yeah. don't stay. I have seen too many women dead. Too many women who have died because they've decided to stay. They could, death doesn't have just to be physical. Death could be mental. This is just a shell living. Yeah. Death could be, you're no longer the person you used to be. Who is that girl who used to dream, who used to have life? Where did she go? Where did she go? Where did she go? So you can always live. I can always live. Jerry, I want to wind up. But before I do, you run an amazing organization. The number of times I've seen you post and I've called you, Jerry, what can we do? You know, you go to your profile. You are out there. You are helping people. You have created these really safe homes for men and women. Why do you do that? Because I never want anybody to ever feel what I felt. 
I don't want anybody to ever be lost and feel like they have nowhere they yeah. can land. Yeah. That's why we do what we do. That's why you do what That's you do. That's what I do. I love that. I love that. You are incredible, my friend. For me to have done this with you on this experience is a dream come true. Yeah, and for those of you in the audience who do not know the kind of organization she runs, it's called Usikimie. You can check it, see the wonderful work she's doing with those men and women. I love that you take men in too. Because they have been, it's like we think men don't go through abuse, right? I love that you take even men too. But for the people who are watching you right now, live, where can they find you? And what would be your cutting shot to our audience? Um, we are no longer silent about abuse. Good. And you're not alone. We have an incredible team that is doing amazing work, yes. that is trying to do as much as you can to end the prevalence of gender-based violence. You can see what my story made me do. And what I'm saying is you can do something. You know somebody somewhere who is going through something? Yeah. Be a friend. If Direct them, show them the path, be there for them. Um, other than that, you can find us on social media. We are Usikimia, U-S-I-K-I-M-Y-E. For those people who are here, we have a desk out there. You can Good. find us there. Yes. And we are, we run an organization that is not funded. Yeah. So we rely on Kenyans of goodwill to help us do this work. Yeah. Because we believe together you and I we can, can end GPV. Exactly. Yeah. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And let's just clap from Jerry. Thank you. I want us to say it together. So on the count of one, two, three, you are going to help me say, Jerry, you are beautiful are we are we are we good so just give me all the energy you have here because i want hey, hey, don't look at me like that no wow we are saying this and we mean it so in the count of one two three help me say jerry you are beautiful are we together one two go jerry you are beautiful